Okay. Report it to the cloud. Okay. People in. Yeah, got people in now. What is up, everyone? Hope you're doing well. Really looking forward to jamming with everyone today. Welcome, Dawn, Joey, Adam, Angela. Pleasure to have you with us today. We're going to start in about four minutes, and uh, I'm going to spend the first uh, 20, 30 minutes talking about how to get free leads, and then Vikram's going to talk about today about how to convert them. We're going to start in about four minutes. If you have any other uh, agents that in your office or with you, feel free to send them a little link, the Zoom link. Love to have them on. Love to chat with them more. Um, while we're here and while we're waiting to start, let us know in the chat below where are you at in the world and how long have you been in real estate? Where are you at in the world? How long have you been in real estate? And we'll throw in the temperature as well. Let's throw in the temperature. What's the temperature of where you're at right now as well? <laughs> well, hey, you never know. Everyone could be in California where everyone could potentially be in a beach. I know Adam Stapley, he's, he has nice weather right now. He's good. He likes his uh, perfect weather. He likes his, what's up, Joey? Good to see you, my friend. Hope to get started. Right. Iowa, what's up, Don? Usually 55, nine years, awesome. We're gonna give uh, it three minutes before we get started and then we're gonna rock and roll here. What's up, Jonathan, San Antonio? Pleasure to connect with you today. We're gonna to jam in about three minutes. We're gonna start in about a minute, 46 seconds, and uh, grab a coffee, grab a water. We're gonna get rocking and rolling here in a couple minutes. some confusion with the time zone that's where we're going to wait a couple minutes to start we're going to start about a minute here and then we're going to rock and roll yeah vikram uh vikram so graciously sent the wrong time <laughs> oh my friend joey the dr is great uh our girlfriends are literally uh, chilling out on the beach today and uh, we're here working so things are good man things are good good to see you give it about 29 more seconds and we're gonna get started here All right, all right, all right. 
pumped to jam with everyone today. Really excited uh, for us to uh, for us to hop into it today. And um, we uh, can you mute yourself over there? That'd be great. Um, oh, really? I'm getting feedback somewhere. Oh, weird. Um, really excited to uh, jam with everyone today to chat with us about a how we can generate free leads for our business, and then b how the heck do we actually convert the leads that we generate for our business. Uh, Vic and I have made a uh, a promise to our clients, a promise to everyone in our ecosystem, a promise to uh, really our team that we're in the new year, we're actually going to be hosting free live weekly pop-up masterclasses where we are going to essentially um, share with you uh, some of our best training around how to actually convert online leads to clients. Um for those that don't know, or for those that have never heard of me before or have heard of Vikram, uh, I run a company called Sheridan Street. Sheridan Street, we are a really an ISA company. We really, what we say is if you have a database of leads, we help you set appointments. If you don't have a database of leads, we help you build that database and then set appointments. Uh, we've had the opportunity to work alongside of some of the largest teams from across uh, North America, helping them place their ISA team, helping them get more transfers. For example, we have a client I was literally on a, on the phone with yesterday, uh, Matt McKenzie out of Denver, Colorado. Uh, in the last three months, they've been able to take uh, the leads that are sitting in their database. We call them, they have ISAs and everything. Um, they found through CSU. So CSU is a, a reporting software for uh, real estate teams that 80% of their sales come between the fifth to the 12th uh, touch point. Um, and obviously, you know, like majority of the conversations uh, in order to get that actual, uh, get even that conversation can be up to words of 37 touch points to get a conversation. But today, what I really want to focus on more than anything is I really want to focus on how we generate free leads. And this is a uh, something I've shared with our private clients before. It's a, a, it's a training that I've done for them in the past. And there's obviously there's paid and then there's free channels. And in my opinion, one of my favorite free channels is a Facebook profile. And today, what I want to walk you through in the first 30 minutes of our session together today is how to take your personal Facebook profile and literally put it on steroids and get people DMing you, building a brand with your Facebook profile so that you have the opportunity and the ability to connect with more people in your local area. So that's what we're going to focus on today. And in the new year, uh, we have a brand new curriculum Curriculum we're going to roll out. Um, so stay tuned for that. Uh, we're literally going to be uh, doing a uh, weekly call that our team is going to help us um, uh, uh, put together. Uh, you know, we're going to train on tonality. We're going to train to train on uh, YouTube. We're going to train on a whole bunch of things. We're going to put together a curriculum, 12 week program. Obviously we go a lot deeper into training and one-on-one -on -one hands on coaching inside of my paid ads mastermind inside of my ISA company inside of Vikram uh, deals, real estate sales Academy, uh, who you, he'll be sharing with you uh, later. So if you're a client already, I want to say thank you. Uh, if you're not a client, uh, I hope you get a ton of value today. So what we're going to focus on for the next 25 to 30 minutes is we're going to focus on how we actually use our Facebook profile to generate free leads. That's what we're going to focus on today. That's a big idea. And I'm going to share my screen and we're going to get into it. So a lot of people, when they come to me, one of the things that they ask, they're like, okay, Cody, this is great. You know, like free leads. How do I actually do that? I'm going to give you the step-by-step -step blueprint that has actually helped me build a seven figure business, uh, uh, step-by-step -step blueprint. This is one of the pillars, uh, to our business and something that I want to address prior to giving you the tactics is that, is this saying that my good friend Sharon says to me consistently, he says, Cody action drives momentum and momentum are the things that drive results. And I want to take it one step back before we even go into the tactics. Because I can give you all the tactics in the world. You know, I could talk to you about, you know, YouTube ads. I can talk to you about free Facebook profile. I can talk to you about tonality. I can talk to you. I can give you the right scripts, but without the right beliefs, none of this matters. Our beliefs map our thoughts. Our thoughts map our actions and our actions drive the momentum. And it's in that momentum we create for ourselves that drive the results. So me and Vic were having a conversation yesterday um, and I was listening into uh, our mutual coach, Jen Cudmore, 
Uh, and she was talking about how more than ever right now in the industry, more than what we need more than ever is mindset training. It's mindset coaching. And, and Vic might get into a little bit of that into his presentation, but my, something that's become abundantly clear, it's the people that believe that the actions that, that they do on a daily basis create the results. Those are the people that stay, stick with it for the long term. Cause I hear it so often. It's like people will hop in and out of things like 30 days at this, you know, 90 days doing this. And then they're like, well, that didn't work. It's like, it's just not true because I have a team that we work with that has a 14% conversion rate on all Zillow leads that they speak with. There's somebody on their team, the team I was telling you about earlier that at 27% of the Zillow conversations he has goes to a client. So the, the encouragement I want to give you, even as I go through this today is like, like I want to encourage the entire real estate industry, the entire entrepreneurial community to stop saying this doesn't work and start saying, how did this person make this work? How does Matt McKenzie have a 14% conversion rate? And why do I have a 2% conversion rate? Because if somebody over in Denver, Colorado is doing it, the question we need to shift our mindset towards is like, how do they do it? Because there's a way to do it. We just haven't figured it out yet. I'm going to give you the tactics today, but it's going to be consistent repetition through doing things, through failing, that ultimately is what's going to drive the results. I can give you all the tactics. I've done this before. 5% of people take me up on this and actually use their Facebook profile towards driving more business for themselves. It's going to take, this is free. This is going to take responsibility. This is going to take daily actions in order for you to make this tactic work in order to generate free leads for your business. I want to set up the caveat before I go into the tactics, because if you don't do the consistent work, it, it, this, this, you know, you can tune out, you can leave now because this won't work unless you actually do the work. So these actions drive conversations. And fundamentally, I believe that all conversion happens in conversation. So our, our clients, for the most part, choose social media as their vessel in order to create conversations. So don't expect results without actions over the next six months. It's going to take six, 12 months of consistent, persistent action in order to drive the results that you're looking for for your business. So let's, let's hop into it. So how do we become the perfect stranger? How do we actually build relationships with people on social media? We stop treating social media like a marketing tool and we start to actually treat social media like social media. We actually connect with people online. We actually become the perfect stranger by using social media as social media. Some of my clients here met me on social media and we formed really great relationships over the last 24 months through me becoming the perfect stranger, through us building relationships over time and understanding that results don't happen overnight and it requires consistent, persistent communication in order to become the perfect stranger for you in your local market. Some of you already have really big brands locally, but there are still people that don't know who you are locally. And the reason that they don't know who you are is because you don't share enough about yourself online on social media. The just listed, the just sold, that is not this training. This training that we're going to talk, walk into is we're going to actually engage with people online and build relationships. I'm going to show you how. So step number one, in order to make this work, you have to add 20 to 30 connections every single day on Facebook in order to make this work. And some people are like, well, how do I do that? How do I add the 20 to 30 connections? Like, like I'm going to give you the step-by-step -step framework on how to do this. So there are, if you go to your friends list on Facebook, there are suggested friends that already have mutual friends with you. And I'm going to give you an example. So I started doing this five years ago. And the funny thing is, is at some point in time, I got connected with another digital marketer that happened to be at Medellin, Colombia. We were connected on Facebook. They're from Chatham, Ontario. We got connected five years ago. We never met each other, never met each other. We connected because we were both in Medellin, Colombia. Um, she's like, I have no idea how we got connected. Uh, and Vic like actually met her, Riley. Um, I had no idea how we got connected. She's a digital marketer. I'm a digital marketer. We ended up grabbing drinks. She ended up referring us business. 
And the problem with social media that people think is they forget about the ancillary introductions that happen through becoming the perfect stranger. So the reason we add 20 to 30 contacts every single day is not so we can DM those 20 to 30 people. It's the compound interest of the relationships that you build with people online that it's like this person might happen to know a person that then can refer you more business through you telling your story online. I've chatted with this uh, with my private clients about storytelling on social media. If it's a it's a it's a lost art right now for especially for realtors and and it's something that I lost along the way. When I started my business studio PTBO six seven years ago, my my tagline was literally tell your story, and we taught businesses and brands how to tell their story online, how to document the process of what you do, what you do, why you do it. The consistent and that, but that takes consistent and persistent communication online in order to make that, in order to actually make that real, in order to get people to start DMing you and be like, okay, you know, you, you are consistent, you're persistent. What is it that you actually do? And with a realtor, it's like, you're consistent, you're persistent. Like, like Joey, for example, I'm going to pick on Joey for a second. I know so much about Joey. And we've never done business together, but I like him and I have connected online. We got, we just randomly got connected online. Uh, a couple of years ago, we grabbed coffee. You know, I know what type of music Joey is into. I know that he loves Blink. He went to the Blink concert. I know all these things about people because of social media. Social media was not created as a marketing tool. It was created as a means to socially network. And I really want anyone listening back to the replay that's here with us live to understand that concept that we have the ability to go so much more deep with people if we use social media as a, not as a marketing tool, but as a means to social network. So we're going to step number one, we're going to add 20 to 30 contacts every day. It could be in Facebook groups. It could be in your suggested friends. It could be, fr you have, Joey has a friend. I could literally go through his friend list and just friend people and just connect with them. I'm not going to sell them anything. This is the issue with direct response marketing. It's like, everyone thinks that I need to slide into the DM. I need to have a conversation. No, it's like, it's like, they're just going to see my post and over time, they're either going to vibe with me or they're going to be like, this guy is a tool and they're going to unfriend me. And that's cool. I'm not for everyone. And you're not for everyone. And you shouldn't be for everyone. The best marketing attracts and repels. Some people love working with me and they hate working with Vikram. And some people love working with Vikram and they hate working, working with me. And that's, to, and that's totally, <laughs> and that's totally fine. Add 20 to 30 contacts every single day on Facebook. Post content every day. And you're like, you might be saying like, well, what do I post? Don't worry. I'm going to give you everyone that showed up today. I'm going to give you a, something I call the 60 day social sprint It is a tool that actually is going to allow you. It's going to help you post content every day for the next 60 days. It's going to get you started. It's a tool I created a couple of years ago, you know, for showing up, I'm going to gift it to you. Um, now we get to the how. So like I said, the 60 day social sprint, you're going to document your life. You're going to tell your story. You're going to share your knowledge. You're going to start conversations. If there's one piece of advice I can give you in regards to a framework that I live by. It's post to DM to CRM. Post to DM to CRM. What does that mean? I'm going to break that apart for you. Our ability to tell our story online, our ability to, to share our knowledge about because like, you got to remember, there's so many people, and I'm going to like, I'll get get into the 60 days. There's so many people online right now that don't understand the, that the they they think that every every agent simply because everyone does just listed just sold. Like my friend Vikram says consistently, we need to show the Gray's Anatomy of what we actually do. That's how we effectively tell our story online. It's like my client had this issue; they didn't understand about you know the the they didn't understand about earnest money. And they, you know, they almost lost their interest in money. Fortunately, they came to me and we were able to sol solve this problem. It's like the art of storytelling. People don't necessarily under like every, like if you look at the, the top communicators in the world, you know, whether you're religious, not religious, look at Jesus as a, a you know, as a human being, how did he, how did he tell, how did he story tell? He story told through parable parables. He didn't teach you the lesson. He used metaphors to get to the actual lesson. And there's a framework that I, I, I taught my private clients. And we went into this very uh, deeply uh, a couple of weeks ago, the, you know, the story lesson offer. If there's one thing that you can think about when you're creating content is like, 
how can I relate this story back to a lesson I want to share? So say, for example, uh, I just landed in Punta Cana, you know, love it. I told a story about how I was walking on the beach. And as I was walking on the beach, so many different people approached me. And when I, when I, uh, there was one person that stood out from the crowd and you can, you know, if you're on the email list, you probably are. So I'm not going to, not going to continue the story, but people relate to that. And therefore people ask me, how's DR? How's Punta Cana? When I connect with them. And it's in that connection. If we just start treating social media, if we start adding people to social media and like not actually like being like a slime ball and DMing them and actually just posting content and building relationships with people and documenting our life, people are like, oh, you're not you're like, you know, it's like, and a lot of people think, you know, and probably some people might be thinking, listening back to the replay or with us here is like, well, my life's not that entertaining. It's like, well, it actually is because it's your life. That's the whole idea of personal branding. So the 60 day social sprint that I'm going to give you, I'm not going to go through it with you too much. Uh, but it builds trust, it builds authority, it builds relationships. Social media was not created as a marketing tool, it was created as a means to socially network. So this is the 60 year so social sprint. You're going to get access to this. I'm going to send you the link um, uh, once I flip over to Vikram and he's going to uh, finish us out. I'm going to flip, uh, I will send you this link, but the 60 day social sprint, and I don't always follow my own advice, but like they say that when you teach something, you learn it forever. And I'm getting back more into doing this. Like the connection post is simple. Ask you this or that question. Character post is tell a story of somebody who's actually helped you win uh, in, in business or in life. Knowledge is like, you know, like actually answering a frequently asked question. There's a tool in content creation called answer the public. And that tool will tell you everything that your consumers are searching around a specific topic. So say, for example, you want to create a video around um, first time home buyers. The questions they're asking. You type first time home buyers into uh into answer the public and it actually spit out the questions that people are asking on Google so that people feel like they're like, oh my God, like Joey just answered my question that I asked Google a month ago in his social media content. I should probably reach out. Oh, Adam just answered this question about, you know, how I get pre-approved for a mortgage. I didn't know that I could do this and this and this. I didn't know I could save seventy two hundred dollars on on my mortgage. I, I had no idea, but you know, it's like, we got to get into the end, the end consumer's mind in order to actually drive. And then eventually what happens is one in five posts, you can make the ask, Hey, if anyone here is, you know, is, you know, and not the standard, I'm, I'm, I give you an exact, um, you know, framework for, you know, for how to ask this, like, you know, looking for five people that might want some results. So maybe I'm looking for five people that, you know, want access to our, uh, off, want to get on our VIP list to get access to off market properties. If that's you just DM me the word off market and I'll get you information and you will find if you use, you know, if you get consistent, people will start DMing you because what happens is we give away freely in public and we're, we are, we earn the right to ask in private. I'm going to say that one more time. We give away our knowledge free in public and it affords us the ability to ask for business in private. Post to DM to CRM, post to DM to CRM, post to DM to CRM. People will start messaging you over time if you get consistent. It'll happen. So how do we do this? The Tide Riser. So if you've been with me before, you've heard me talk about this. We need to prime the algorithm. My good friend, Jason Capital and Sharon Servaz will talk about this consistently, but um, we need to prime the algorithm. Facebook re rewards engagement. So here are some examples. Like what's the best book you've read this year? All we're doing is we're trying to create engagement on our social media profile so that when we go to tell a story, we go to make an ask, our posts get in front of those people more so that we have the ability in order to have a conversation with them in the future. Let's settle this once and for all, Dunkin' Donuts or you know Starbucks. I'm priming the algorithm. I'm giving Facebook a reason in order to get me in front of more people. Super simple. You don't have to like they're like you don't have to overcomplicate it. Just ask a this or that question. You want to prime the algorithm. I'll give you an example of some stuff that Sharon's done uh, in the past, or that uh, you know my good friend Leo Chen, who's an agent out of Laguna Beach, California. Uh, who here owns an Airbnb? You know, 20 comments. What's one positive book that influenced your life? 115 comments. What's one of the things that gets you stressed? 81 comments. Asking for recommendations. And like, so, like most of the time when I, when I personally ask for recommendations, I, I'm genuinely asking for recommendations. And it has to feel 
like you actually, you have to actually want to engage with people. You actually, like the thing about this strategy, you ha actually have to like people in order to do this. But, and, I, and I'm guessing that like you got into real estate because you like people. Um, I like people. So this strategy works well for me and it generates me free leads. It, it, you know, and I have agents that follow this formula to a T that add an additional a deal to two deals a month. A large portion portion of Leo's business comes from his personal Facebook profile because he does this consistently. He's consistently posting. So what are questions you can ask in order to prime the algorithm? True or false questions. What's the highest mortgage you've ever paid? How much did you spend on your first rental project? Who's, uh, who invests in stocks or crypto? Like things that actually interest you. Like I'm into stocks and crypto. So I post things about stocks and crypto. Have you ever flipped the home? Which real estate app do you use the most? Netflix or Amazon Prime, uh, movie recommendations work really well, and I, and I genuinely, I for me, I genuinely take a lot of these recommendations, and I actually do like you know, especially when I'm traveling to a new place, like where should I travel to next? Like I'm actually like curious about people's, like it's the curiosity in me that like if there's one thing I could say, it's like get more curious about your prospects and get more curious about um, just about people, and good things will happen. When do you think interest rates will drop below? 5%. This is a freaking great question, especially right now. Just throw this question on your personal Facebook profile. Now, obviously you, the more people that you're connected with, the more people that will answer. That's just, that's just the science of numbers. But when do you think interest rates will drop below, you know, 6% or 5%? And then what you're going to do, you're going to take that. And you're going to message the person. And you're gonna say, you're gonna say, hey, what, like you know, what's your what, what interest rate are you sitting at right now? And you start a conversation, and you got a free lead just by messaging them. Post the DM to CRM, post the DM to CRM, and sometimes people will message you. But literally, like it's like, when do you think uh, interest rates will drop below five percent? You're literally gonna hit the message button, message them, and be like, that's crazy that you have a three percent. Uh, you know, like, like what, what, uh, uh, what interest rate are you currently sitting at right now? They tell you, it's like, oh, that's crazy. You're at 3%. Like, and then you just start a conversation. And they're just curious. And that's when Vikram will get into what to say. Cause that's not my strong suit. My strong suit is getting them into the DM and then I just have a conversation with them. I don't have scripts for that, but, uh, Vikram might, um, Collecting names and email addresses, post a DM to CRM as simple as the, the the reason we add, you know, 20 to 30 a day is because eventually when they see your stuff, eventually you're going to ask what we call a conversion post. It's like, Hey, I just recorded a 33 minute video on how to convert 40 to 70% of your database to online conversations to in-person meetings. DM me the word conversations below. If you want it, 28 comments, my GMB training got 93 comments. I picked up 50 free leads and now I'm communicating them via, via email just from one single post. Well, no, sorry, 93 on this one. 93 emails uh, just by one post. I recorded a quick video. So for you, Adam, like taking your content, like, so Adam does a webinar, like you should take your pre-recorded your pre, uh, pre webinar and start using that. It's like, hey, I just recorded a video on how you can save $7,600 on interest payments a year. Comment the word interest below and I'll get you access to it. Free leads, free leads. And then you just build a relationship and a conversation with them. Um, the next one is deal of the week. I think that like, so we teach our clients and we do our with this for our clients as an email. I think you should do this every single week in order to get free leads. So just remove, hey, Tom, and just literally put deal of the week. This week's deal of the week is a condo that will go fast. Here's some info, two beds, two baths, walk out balcony, modern new kitchen, 699. If you're interested in this deal or want to get access to other, just uh, comment the word deal below and I'll, and I'll get you info. No text links, no links, like no none of this just listed, just sold. The whole idea of deal of the week, we do this via email, is to create the conversation. You should be doing this via social post once a week. Free leads. I have clients that do this literally religiously every single week that add new leads into their database. You know, this week, and you can even get more specific. This week's deal of the week is a is a single family home in uh, uh, downtown Chatham, Ontario. Here's some info. 
this, this, walk out balcony, mo modern kitchen, 649. You're not giving them any details about like where it is because they have to, D like you want to go post a DM to CRM, post a DM to CRM, post a DM to CRM. I'm going to keep hammering that. So many people do social media so wrong because the CRM gives me the ability to build a relationship via email over time. Post a DM to CRM. Um, FAQ, create video. Fame is the most efficient business model. Here's my workflow on creating video content. Um, I'm going to go, I'm going to hammer through this really quick. I'm going to hand it over to Vikram because I'm running uh, late on time. But uh, I have a one hour planning session every single week with my, uh, with my assistant where I literally just do a brain dump. My assistant writes the scripts using chat GPT. A lot of my private clients get access to my scripts. We brainstorm hooks for the videos. There's, and there's, we have a hook training video in the portal, Adam, just so you're aware, um, you know, like shoot me a message afterwards. If you want access to the hook training video, you might already have it, but, um, I tackle each section of the scripts in parts. Um, so meaning I don't like when I record the video content, I don't do it like all at once I'll do we'll record the video and I'll, I'll shoot it. I'll stop. I'll shoot it and stop. Cause a lot of people ask me, it's like, Oh, that's great. You have video content that's consistently, you know, produced and it looks good. How do you do that? Um, and my editor cuts everything together. You can get an editor or a VA. You get a 10 hour VA through a company called assistantly. I think they charge like 600 bucks a month for a 10 hour VA where they, that VA works with for you 10 hours a week. Um, I believe Lath still has that program. I would be, I would, I, he would have that. I don't know. Uh, 10 hour VA, but like 600 bucks a month, they can do anything for you admin task. Uh, uh, they could do your video editing, you know, like uh, I would get a 10 hour VA, uh, you know, to, to help you with this 10 hours a week, definitely well worth it. If you can't, if you aren't ready for like a part-time or like a, uh, a full-time VA, but having a VA to help you create content is something I would highly, highly recommend everyone to have. I wouldn't be able to do it with my v without my VA. Um, I'm also going to get you access to this as well. This is called our hundred top hundred, uh, uh, we call it the real estate agent, micro marketer, hundred ideas of how to create video content. I'm going to throw that in the chat there for you below. So like once I flip over to Vikram, I will find this and I'll find the 60 day social sprint and I'll throw it in the comment section below. Um, the AI tools that we use in order to create content is syllabi.ai. It helps you create video scripts, video.ai help captions, videos, long form, short, uh, short form content. There's another uh, uh, there's a new platform we like a little bit more called Riverside. And I'm, I'm encouraging a lot of our private clients to create podcasts and to interview local business owners because it's super easy content. So like for you, Joey, it'd be super easy for you to do a, uh, a podcast with all the local restaurants. Like you could go to, um, uh, what's that, the name of that restaurant I like in Chatham, um, pizza hut. no pizza hut, um, um, Centro. Huh? Centro? Yes. Centro. You go into Centro. Everyone loves that, that spot. Uh, you could do a, uh, uh, a podcast and just interview them. It'd be like a 10 minute video and then you can cut it up into shorts. There's a ton of, ton of different ideas that we could put. And then chat GPT helps me write my long form video content. Um, and that is what I got for you guys today. I'm going to, I'm going to drop some things in the chat below for you to, uh, take the content, run with it, uh, to really use your social media profile to generate leads. I hope you found that useful. And I'm gonna hand it over to Vikram and Vikram is gonna talk about, okay, once you get these leads in these conversations, how do we take them and uh, get them to give us money? I What's up, you guys? Oh, you're gonna have to, uh, you're gonna have to turn your volume down. Cool. Um, Cody and I are sitting next to each other at the table, uh, which is pretty cool in the Dominic which is fantastic. So uh, first off, you guys, if you got some value from Cody, give him a one in the chat um, because that was fire. Uh, I was trying to get my camera to work this whole time, but couldn't. So if you got some any any value from him, give him a one because uh, what we want to do is we really want to help you guys create content, create conversations. And then once we're in those conversations, we want to take those conversations to the next level. So I'm going to share my screen Let's see if technology works. I always tell Cody he's the more Indian of the two of us, even though I'm technically the Indian. Um, all right, can you guys see that? All right, let's jam. So let's talk about removing resistance, all right? Not everyone you meet will buy, but everyone you meet can, can become a raving fan. I think that's one of the most important things you can remember. Think about it this way. 
most agents, I have a fundamental belief that if most agents did two to three deals a month, their life would change consistently. If they could do 24 to 36 months, most agents' life would fundamentally change. Now, some of you guys might be at a higher level. Don't get me wrong. We work with agents that are doing 50, 60 deals a year. But for the average person, if they could get to two to three deals a month. Now, let's say it takes 500 conversations to get to you know, those th three, four, five deals a month. That's 495 to 498 people you speak to that didn't purchase from you. Think about that. Not everybody you meet is going to buy, but everybody can be your fan. And it only takes one fan. Uh, my only fan joke didn't pop the way I wanted to. Damn it. It only takes one fan, right? A day to help you guys get to a business that is just insane. So, I want to work here a little bit with you guys, and I want to show you guys something that I think is really valuable. So I'm going to switch to the iPad here. I don't have my stream deck, so we're doing things old school and manual. Um, your resistance becomes their objection. So in these four squares, and I'll get you this uh, afterwards, but on a piece of paper in your four squares, what, what kind of resistance do you guys have? Like put it in the chat. What is your resistance right now in the market? Is it uncertainty? Is it rates? Do you feel that it's too expensive? Do you think that it's not a good time to buy? What are the things that are holding you back? Do you have fear? Do you have uncertainty? Do you believe the market's volatile, right? What are the objections you give to other people when you're in a buying situation? What are the objections you give is typically what we give back from our prospects. So if you give the objection when you get on a sales call, oh, I need to wait, I need to think about it. Oh, it's really expensive, right? Inventory, right? Maybe I need to, uh, I need to do more research, right? Send me an email, right? Ooh, elections. Oh my God, we're in wars, right? Whatever you guys give, we attract back. Whatever we give, we attract. So if we think things are expensive, guess what? Your prospects think things are expensive. If you say, hey, shoot me an email, let me get back to you. When you're going to book an appointment, your prospect says, hey, we need to do a little bit more research. Shoot me an email. So we have to get over, like Cody was talking a little bit about mindset. We have to get over ourselves before we expect other people to. Now, here's some of the common objections, right? And what I would say is, what are your top five, right? Maybe top three. No inventory, prices are too high. We're not ready. We just started our search. Rates are too high. Rates are going to go down. You guys, I love you. But when you post rates are going down six times in the next 12 months, why in God's blue earth would I buy now? Like, think about that. Adam, don't laugh. Adam, don't laugh. I see your beautiful, beautiful smile over there. Don't laugh. If you guys give all this info, but there's no context, do a green screen and educate people. Don't just post because everybody else is posting. We need to educate people, right? So rates are going down. What does that mean? If rates go down six times, let's say rates go from seven and a quarter, seven, maybe seven, maybe if you have, a, you know, depending on who you're working with, maybe you're, maybe you're in the high sixes right now. If rates go down to 6%, what's going to happen to the market? Put in the chat, what's going to happen to the market? What do you guys think? If rates go down, what's going to happen to the market? Are we going to see more or less prices will go up? Interesting, Sean. But if we tell them, your salespeople, higher prices, higher down payments, higher closing costs, right? So what we have to do is we have to educate people. And we're going to get into that. But what are your top objections? Because you're going to need to write out a framework for each one of those objections, and I'm going to give it to you, and it's going to rock your world. Um, so here's what's missing, right? Here's what's missing. Your prospects don't feel safe, which is why you get objections. Maybe they feel like you didn't validate them, which is why you get objections, and they lack confidence in either the market or they lack confidence in you. Put a one in the chat if you guys have talked to a prospect and they say, we're not ready to buy. We're six months out. And then you call them two or three months later because that's what you were told to do. And they said, oh, we're already in contract and we close in a couple of weeks. 
Put a one if that's ever happened to you. Appreciate your honesty, brother. Sean never happened. Not everybody can be as sexy as you, Sean. Adam, Scott, why does that happen? They weren't confident, right? You didn't provide safety, or maybe they didn't feel that you listened to them. Because we're so busy telling them, oh, this is the best time to buy. You don't want to wait. This is the best time. Maybe it is. Maybe it's not. Right? Have you guys ever heard a seller say, I don't want to lose my 3.5% interest rate? And then you go into the spiel about how interest rates used to be 7 and 8 9%, and this is actually pretty normal, and they still hang up the phone on you? What if you said this? What if you said, you know what? You're right. Rates are really high. And I don't know either if this is the right time for you guys to sell or not. It might actually, it might actually not make sense for you guys to sell in the next five to 10 years because I don't know if rates are going to come down to the three to fours anytime soon or, or really even ever again. It's it's a very rare thing. Do you think they're going to be triggered or disarmed when you say that? Do you think there's a little bit of curiosity in their statement? If we can create curiosity, yeah, you know, I, Don, I, I, I don't even know if you guys should get out of your, your current rate. It, to be honest with you, it, I, I, I've been doing this for 11 years. That's the lowest I've ever seen rates. And I, I don't know in the next 11 years, if I'm going to see them that low again. So it might just make sense for you guys, but I guess, would it be okay if maybe I gave you a slightly different perspective and maybe we could have a cup of coffee about what you guys were actually raised your hand for in the first place? Because they raised their hand. They came to you. You didn't go like you didn't put a gun up to their door and say, Hey, you got to talk to me about selling your home. So we have to be able to create that. Now, how do we create trust? We're going to talk a little bit about tone today. The other thing is we'll talk about pace. The other thing is me, me, me. Most agents, right? Let's say you're calling an expired and you start the conversation. It's I'm the number one agent. I'm calling because I'm the neighborhood expert and I have a buyer and I want to know about the properties in the neighborhood. If you're an expert, you already know about it. We always start the conversation. Well, let me tell you, I'm the number one buyer's agent in the area. We did $42 million in listings last month. Um, we know everything and we're this, we're that. They don't care about us anymore. They have this wonderful device called an iPhone or an Android. And there's this thing on it called Google. And all they do is they just put in your beautiful name and they find out everything they need to know about you. And if they don't find things about you, well, they probably ain't going to have you come over because I'm not going to have some random stranger into my house anymore. Too many weirdos out there. So having a brand allows them to know you're not a weirdo. So we're using the wrong tone. We're being confrontational. We're saying the wrong things. Um, we build trust by having great tonality. We build trust by asking the right questions based off of what they said. And we build trust by being able to listen, right? Which means we need frameworks and scripts. I know you guys hate it. Um, I would take a picture of this because we can't go into it. But if we started more conversations with curiosity, if we're a little bit more empathetic with our prospects, if we had a little bit of fun with them, sometimes we got to challenge them and we got to be a little skeptical. We've got to kind of be a little, not condescending. That's not what, that's not nice. Do you want somebody to be condescending to your mom? Right? When they're selling their house and they're excited about making a move, they're also scared shitless. Oh, if you guys have kids in the room, put a one and I won't swear. If you guys are sensitive, uh, you should leave now because it's Friday and who knows what happens. I think Cody's got I think Cody's got my whiskey out. He's already drinking. Sometimes you got to be assertive, right? Sometimes you got to let them know with our tone, right? Because tone sets the intention, okay? Tone sets the intention, Do you guys see how we're never really enthusiastic? That's old school. Like, let's not be enthusiastic. Hey, I'm just calling you, Cody May. What's going on? Cody was listening to my calls yesterday, and I was, like, not into it at all. I did not want to be on the phone. I wanted to eat. I was hungry. I had four cups of coffee. And Cody's like, bro, 
are you okay? And I'm like, dude, I'm nervous. I'm tense. Like there's six people in the room. They're like, everybody's listening and talking. And, and like, I'm just like, I, I'm not in the zone. And he's like, dog, go get a beer, chill out. And I was like, is it that bad? He's like, that's the worst I've ever heard you ever in history. He's like, you're enthusiastic. You're like, you know, like what, the, what has happened here? I was like, I have no idea. I could, uh, I'm like, I could, I could feel the, the anxiousness on the, on, in the room. I'm like, bro, you need to sell down, man. Like just chill out. So I was, I, I, I wasn't curious. I was coming with that assertiveness right out the gate. That's why we have our calls recorded. That's why you should do call jam sessions with other people. Right. F it Friday. <laughs> Cody doesn't drink my whiskey. I got a McAllen in the fridge and I was like, Cody, you want to drink? He's like, bro, whiskey's too strong for me. I was like, let me get you a, let me get you a Smirnoff brother. I got you. No worries. Right. Your tone sense the attention, right? Did you guys notice that was a little bit of fun, skeptical kind of playful tone with Cody? How do you want to start your conversations? Curious, right? When somebody tells you that, rates are super high and they might not be able to afford, maybe we should have a little bit of empathy, right? Like we have to learn that our tone sets the intention. Gentlemen in the room, right? Ladies in the room, when you hear that tone, right? In the bedroom, that sexy tone, y'all know what it is. Cody's like, are you kidding me? Y'all know what that tone is, right? But you also know the tone when you forgot to take something out. You also know the tone when you forgot to grab something that somebody said, oh, I, I need this really bad. And you forgot. You're like, right. And it starts a certain way. All right. We need to understand that tone creates resistance. It's one of the most important things that nobody talks about because it's hard to train on. Tonality is hard to train on, right? Scott and I have been working on tone and like he's a naturally great communicator he's charismatic he's nice he's intelligent right just like I, I think i am too but yesterday there's little things throughout the process right there's little things throughout the process that if we change two millimeter tweaks as tony robbins said to tiger or as tiger woods coach said to uh to to to, 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 to tiger if you change your hands two millimeters and you try it long enough things are going to go crazy like your swing is going to be unstoppable, but he had a three month gap. And then after that four months, he was number one, number one, number one, number one, whatever he thought tiger lost it. Now he did eventually lose it, but that's a different story. Show, not tell, right? Show and demonstrate to your prospect. All right. So we're going to use stories. We're going to do proof over promise, disarm, isolate, solve. That's the framework for your objection handling this arm isolate please resend the 60 day sprint um disarm isolate solve all right the first thing we want to do is we want to disarm the prospect right let them know that their objections okay right but we need to bring them down if i'm triggered and they're triggered what do you think happens is that the way we want to talk about their issues and concerns both being triggered no, we want to disarm, isolate, and solve. So here's how you disarm yourself. Because if you're not disarmed, you're screwed. So the way you disarm yourself is you breathe, you slow down, you chill out, you don't objection handle. You don't just say, no, flat out, we don't do that. It, commissions, right? Commissions, you guys, you guys have had commission talks with people before, and you're trained to just say, we don't do nothing less than X percent. We, we don't negotiate our commission. Have, has anybody ever come into your business and right? Like we don't do that. You guys like, I, ne I negotiate everything. Everything's negotiable. Everything in life is negotiable. Now you could say no, but don't just flat out say no. And then start hammering them with the objection handling. The way we disarm is, oh yeah, yeah. That's not a problem. Oh yeah. No worries. Right. If somebody says, Hey, do you guys do uh do you guys do you guys lower your commission? Oh yeah, yeah. No worries. That's not a problem. Let's talk about it. This arm. Now we're gonna like so so if they say I need to think it over, yeah, that's not a problem. What's your time frame? Like I'm getting back to me in the next day or two just to see if I'd be available for you. 
right? We disarm them. Oh, I, I could probably get back to you maybe not tomorrow. I, I need a little bit more time. How about how about I get back to you on Thursday? Okay, yeah. And and just like before I go, like, what were you wanting to go over on Thursday? Just so that I'm prepared. Well, you know, I and now you have their real objection, right? So the first part is disarming, right? So this is how we disarm, and this is how we're going to start to isolate. And now they're talking again. And they're chill and you're chill, right? Now, imagine if I said it like this. Yeah, now, before I go, um, what were you wanting to talk about on Thursday? Which is how a lot of us sound. Because we haven't practiced this, right? This is what we train inside of our academy. So here's a couple of isolation terms, right? When you say um, rates are going to go down in six months, like, how do you mean by that? Like, what, what do you, hold on. Like, why would you like, help me understand, like, why do you feel waiting for six months is better than possibly buying now? Oh, well, because if rates go down, then I can afford more. Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Right? Yeah, that makes sense. Do you mind if maybe I give you a slightly different perspective? All right. So now we've isolated this problem. Okay. So... We might, we'll probe and clarify, right? We're not solving the issue here. We're, if we don't understand what it is, we need to probe and clarify, right? And we want to be curious and we want to be empathetic, right? We might need to be a little skeptical if they say ridiculous things. Well, we think rates are going to go to the 3%, 3%, eh? Tell me more about like, what are you, what, what, what are you guys reading in the news that says 3%? Like, I, I, I want to read that too. Well, we talked to our brothers, uncles, dog walker, sister who just got her license and she's 19 and she thinks that the market's going to flip upside down. Oh, okay. Do you mind if I give you like a slightly different perspective? Would you be okay if I shared maybe like a different point of view? All right. So now we've isolated. When you say it's too low, when you say the commission is too high, I guess what would prevent you from getting a home uh, you want if we're able to find homes for other clients like you, um, what, like, I guess what would prevent us from getting your home sold in this market if, you know, if we were able to get our other clients' homes sold or what would, I guess, like, what would prevent us from getting your home sold in this market if other homes have sold in your neighborhood? Right now I'm in presentation coffee mode. Um, so we're going to slow that down. And I know we're, we're kind of running up on time. So I want to be mindful of that. Um, if you guys are okay with like an extra 10 minutes in the chat, um, just put a one. You guys are okay if we go like an extra five or 10 minutes in the chat. Um, cool. All right. I'll slow down then. So when we isolate, all right, when we isolate the, uh, objection, all right, when we isolate the objection, Oh, how do I pin myself, Cody? All right, cool. So when we isolate the objection, now, if you guys ever get on a sales call with me, what you'll notice is that I always have something in my hand. Like right now I have a toothpick because you guys couldn't see me, um, but I always have a pen in my hand. Like I have a pen here, I have a pen here. And the reason why is because some of us have like this little bit of a nervous twitch. And so it allows us to kind of like have something to hold on to. It's kind of like if you go to a party, you have a drink in your hand. Um, I think what's what Scott got in his hand, he's got a little coin, he's got a little chip it looks like. The other reason why is because when you have a pen in your hand, it forces me to concentrate because I'm not fidgeting with other things. If you're in a live presentation or on a Zoom call and I look down because I have my notes, I have a script, right? I, I look down, but they see the pen and I bring the pen down. What do you guys think if you see my arm moving, right? What do you guys think is happening? taking notes. If we take notes, doesn't that make people feel more confident that we care about what they're saying subliminally? So it's important that we do that. So when, when you say, um, when you say that price and I watch my watch everything, even if you're on the phone, you want to do this because you guys are doing a lot of outbounds. Um, so when you, when you say, right, Joey, that, um, uh, you saw on 
Cody's Instagram. Thanks, Cody, for posting the rates are going to be going down six times in the next year for the feds. Yeah, when you saw that on your uh on, on your on your friend's other friend agent's friend's Instagram, I guess like walk me through um why why do you why why would you want to wait versus like maybe looking in the next three or six months? And they're gonna say something like we want to get a better price. Um, on our monthly payment. Oh, okay. That makes sense, right? Okay. That makes sense. Now, before we, before we move forward, because I don't even know if what we're doing over here would help you. I guess like you, you said earlier that, you know, cause we've been working with you guys for a couple of years now. What, why didn't you guys like, what prevented you guys from buying a home back in, let, let's say 2020, 21 competition. You guys put some offers out, didn't win the house. Okay, that makes sense. Now, how many like how many properties did you guys lose back then? Two. Okay. And do you know, like I know it was a long time ago. I don't remember the coffee I had for lunch this morning, but like a little bit of fun energy, right? A little pattern interrupt. But like when when you guys were putting offers on homes, were you guys putting low offers in or were you guys like putting high offers in? Oh, you were putting high offers in and you weren't able to win the property. What, why not? Oh, there was multiple offers. Oh, okay. Do you guys see how we're guiding them back to 2021? Cause a lot of the people like in our databases are aged leads. Okay. So then, so then um, what prevented you from buying the home then? The other offers were, high. oh, okay. The competition. And do you remember how many offers there were? I think one house was 12, 12 offer. Oh my gosh. Wow. Now, do you think there might be some people that are on the sidelines like you that weren't able to get a property back in 2021 that are waiting for rates to go down too? Yeah, that's possibility. Okay. So like if rates start to come down, do you think some of those buyers might come out of the woodworks? Like they might, they might decide to shave their beard and take off their, their caveman suit and come back to the market and actually buy a home. Yeah. Okay. And what do you think is going to happen with prices? Do you think they're going to stay flat? Do you think they're going to go down or do you think they're going to go up? I don't know. Well, if you had to think about it. Oh, you think they're going to go up? Oh. And again, like we could totally wait. Now here's where I lean back, right? Here's where I lean back and I'm like thinking, right? Well, we could wait and you guys could totally wait. Um, I guess if rates are going to come down and prices are going to go up, right? I'm thinking rates are going to go down and prices are going to go up. What do you think? Like, what do you feel is going to happen with competition? What do you guys think? Up or down? Oh, okay. Because like, here's a different perspective. We can always get you to refinance the, right? We can always help you get like a refinance. But the one thing we can't change is competition. And the other thing we can't change is the price you buy the home at. So like, and I know I called you out of the blue, but if you'd find it helpful, what we could do is, right? Has, like, has anybody shared with you the three most important things about buying a home in today's market and getting a really good deal and and like talking about rates and inventory and like, you know, how all that like goes together? Oh, no. Oh, man, I didn't. I'm, I'm, I apologize. I didn't think so. Well, if you're not opposed as like a next step, what we could do is put some time aside on both of our calendars to talk about those things and a little bit more detail. And then you can decide on like what's best for you. Like you guys could wait, you guys could decide maybe you want to start looking in, in the summertime. Like, would you find that helpful? So in that framework, we told them that we're going to talk about three things that matter to them. We asked them if they were opposed to it. So they said no. So they got the no out of the way. We then put time on both of our calendars because we're all busy. So we frame that we're not just sitting around doing nothing. People are in the marketplace still buying and selling. We focus completely on them. 
we were chill, so they were chill. Because I'm not going to force Sean or Scott to buy a home. Like, no matter what I say, isn't going to make Sean or Scott go into the bank and pull out hundreds of thousands of dollars to buy a home when rates are seven, eight percent still. And this is one of the scariest times to buy in history. Like, it was scary in 2020 and 2021, but at least the economy was going up. Now it's like, wars, elections, affordability, volatility, like this is a scary time. If somebody says it's scary, like you're right, it is. It's actually really scary to buy. I agree. You are not wrong. That's what our clients love is that we sit down to share with them the three most important things about like market volatility, about interest rates and like how to get a good deal. And if you guys decide to wait, totally cool. Like that's not a problem. Some people it makes sense for, some people it doesn't make sense for. I guess, would you find it helpful if we could, you know, like, would you be opposed if we could sit down and talk about like what's best for you guys? And they're like, no, not at all. Okay, cool. So what works better for you? Now, this is important, right? This is important because a lot of people have been trained Give them two times. Hey, what works better? For, I, I have time of. I have. I have time available at two or four. I. It, that's about me. No, I want to make it about you still, right? I, I still want to keep it about Cody. So yeah, like what typically works better for you? Afternoons are like late evening. Early afternoons are like mid evenings. Early afternoons, okay. And then is it just you buying, or is there like a significant other. No, it's me and my girlfriend. Okay. And is, is, uh, is she available that time too? Oh yeah. Yeah. We're both available in the afternoons. Okay. And then, um, you know, I know you said you guys aren't in a major rush, right? So like now we took out the timing zone and I know I called you guys out of the blue. Um, I do have some time on, uh, let me check my calendar. Today's Friday. I have some time today. Um, that might be short notice. I also have a little bit of time tomorrow. Would, would you have any availability today or tomorrow? And I could check to see what I have on my calendar. Right? Super low key, super chill. All that hard selling doesn't work. All right? Like they don't want it. So let me give you guys a framework here so you can write your own objections. If that was helpful, right? Like just put a one in the chat. Like if you found that helpful. Um, cool. I just want to make sure you guys that we're sharing value. So let me... Let me show the iPad here. So this is something that I created. Oh, there we go. So this is something that I created um, to help our private clients. And it's called the DIS, right? It's called the DIS um, framework. So what we're going to do is uh, disarm. Okay. So how would we disarm? All right. So all of the objections you're getting, create one of these for it, right? So it could be rates. I want to wait because we think rates are going down. Right? Oh, yeah, no worries. Right? Oh, yeah, no worries. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, no worries. Right now we need to humanize and isolate. Right? And we might need to ask them, like, hey, what makes, like, what what have you been seeing out there? Like, tell me, like, tell me, Trent, uh, what, what have you seen out there in this market that, you know, makes you feel like rates are going to go down. Well, I've been studying the Fed right now. You know that where they're getting their research from. Oh, I saw it on TikTok. Okay, cool. Now you know where they're getting their research from, right? And then you should have a couple of different frameworks on how to solve their issue, right? So first we disarm them, then we isolate, and then we solve. What most agents try to do is solve without understanding. If we don't understand completely, right, and a lot of you guys here are team leads or you guys run sales organizations, you're buying leads, you're having Cody's company call them, and then they're solving objections and killing, 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 humanizes, misspelled. I, I just wanted to make sure that you guys are paying attention. Um, <laughs> um it probably is. I am not the greatest speller out there. Um, I blame AOL Instant Messenger and seventh grade for that. Disarm human I solve. Give this sheet, right? Give this sheet to your team members. All right. If you guys want to join me, um, and, and 
some things where sometimes we say like, oh, I understand. Like we don't actually typically understand what our prospects are going through in their eyes. We think we understand, which is making an assumption. And we all know that if you make an assumption, you make an ass out of you and me. So instead of saying like, oh, I totally understand what you're going through. Oh, could you, that, that makes sense. Um, but just so that I could actually better, can you explain what that means? Or um, how do you mean by that, right? Or, oh, is that frustrating for you guys? Um, if you guys want to join the conversation online with me, go to Facebook, The Real Estate Sales Dojo. Um, if you guys want to follow me on IG, we're posting a lot more content that we're sharing with our private clients. Um, it's just my name, Coach Vikram Deal, or you can QR code scan that beautiful looking monkey in the middle. Um, and if you guys want to do a free week with me inside of the Real Estate Sales Academy, where we actually go over your scripts, we go over your um, objection handlings, we go over presentations, um, and we go over these frameworks in more detail. Um, you can scan this and I will, uh, we'll, are we sending out these things afterwards? Are we sending an email out to everybody? Cody's the brains behind the operation. I'm just the doer. Um, so we'll get you guys all of this and you can, uh, you can jam. Um, other than that, like if you guys share with us kind of what you're working on and what you're, you know, what you are getting, right. What we can do is cause we're creating the curriculum, um, Appreciate you, Jonathan. Um, what we're doing is we're creating the curriculum in the next two weeks for next year. We already have a lot of it built out. But what are you seeing in your markets? Right? Because the whole point of this, the whole point of the RE Agent podcast, where we've done 232 episodes in the last 12 months, like, is to help you guys. So the reason we create everything we do is because we want our free stuff to be better than the paid stuff that most people are getting out in the, in the world of, of real estate. So let us know what you're looking for. Um, but your tonality and your speed of conversation, right. Plays a huge impact. And that's why actors, some make it and most don't It's because that's really hard to learn and train on your own. Um, so we appreciate you being here on a Friday, we know you guys are out there busy, closing deals, doing business, working hard. Um, Cody, anything before we wrap up? Last thing I'll say to wrap up uh, on in regards to everything you just learned from Vikram, the biggest uh, key takeaway that I can give everyone here after listening to hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of agent calls, whether you have a team, whether you're a solo agent, record your calls. We did a random sample. Uh, it was about 60 to 70 call reviews. Some of you have got call reviews dropped in your um, uh, in your Slack channel. Less than 32% of people ask for a meeting. Less than 8% of people are using the scripts that we give them, actually using scripts that we give them. So the encouragement I would give you here is like, we need like, just like a Kobe Bryant, you know, reviewed his game tapes, like mama mentality. If you've never read that book, I'd highly recommend it. Um, we have to practice, we have to role play, we have to listen back to our calls. It can be scary, but it's the only way that we get better. Um, so that would be my encouragement. If you guys are on Chime, you're on follow-up boss, you are on whatever platform you're using, uh, record your calls. If you're working with a coach, show up to those calls with those recorded calls, because that's the only way you get better. I sat across the table yesterday as he was making prospecting calls. And I literally just gave him feedback in real time. I'm like, bro, your tone sounds like shit, bro. Your everything is like, I'm like, I'm like, you're asking stupid questions. And we literally tweaked his script in real time together. And that's because I have the ability to speak to his life and he has the ability to speak in my life. Like I do, like I'll do marketing things that make zero sense or I'll do, I'll do, do things uh, via sales that don't work. And he'll do the same for me. So find somebody that can hold you accountable, review your calls, uh, like I said, at the top of the hour, I have a team that is closing 14% of all Zillow. I have a team that gave us a bunch of age leads. They've closed nine transactions in the last 90 days of working with us. Scripting, role-playing. They know exactly what to say. They know exactly how to say it. And that's what I want to leave you with today. I hope you got a ton of value. We'll see y'all soon. Um, and uh, yeah, hope you have a great rest of your Friday. We'll see you soon. Bye guys.